from Dory Larson, who is the author on the EV Toolkit. Dory is the Electric Transportation Program Manager with the Southern Alliance for Clean Energy. And so with that, Dory, I will turn the mic over to you um, to kick off our program. Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you, Blair, for that introduction and for the opportunity to share with you some information about making the switch from driving uh, to driving electric. And thanks to all of you who've joined in uh, for spending some time with us today. So <clears throat> next slide. If you're not familiar with the Southern Alliance for Clean Energy for over 35 years, SACE has been a regional leader advocating for equitable and responsible energy choices in the Southeast. And as a leading voice for energy policy in our region, SACE is focused on transforming the way we produce and consume energy in the Southeast. Next slide. So with this presentation, I am going to give an overview of EV ownership and then the basics of EV charging, including where to locate charging stations, and then go over some incentive programs that are useful to know. So next slide. So why electric vehicles? Um, if you would hit the next button, there we go. Thanks. Um, the transportation sector overtook the energy sector as the largest contributor of carbon dioxide pollution in the United States around 2017. But there is definitely something that we can do about it, and that's part of what we're talking about today. So next slide, please. Um, so to make sure that we're all level set, plug-in electric vehicles are a category of vehicles that include both plug-in hybrid vehicles shown in blue and battery electric vehicles shown in green. So basically it's any vehicle that has the ability to plug in and accept electricity as an energy source. So the next slide um, talks about how EVs, uh, the some of the benefits of electric vehicles. So I've been driving electric since 2017, and I love the fact that there are no oil changes with an all-electric um, vehicle. So I never have to go in uh, for oil changes. There's very low maintenance. Um, most EV owners charge overnight in their garage, making it even more convenient than stopping for gas. They're also very quiet rides, um, they're safe, and they have instant torque. So they've got that instant get up and go, makes them a lot of fun to drive. Next slide. And also, the um, if you look at the total lifetime ownership costs, EVs are getting cheaper. And with several new cars in the twenty dollars to $30,000 range and more models coming, um, <clears throat> it's making them an even better um, choice. If you look at research from Consumer Reports, it shows that when total ownership costs are considered, including such factors as purchase price, fueling costs, and maintenance expenses, EVs frequently come out ahead, especially in more affordable models. Plus, the Inflation Reduction Act has extended tax credits for up to $7,500 for a new EV for the next 10 years, and I'm going to talk about that later. Next slide, please. So in terms of fueling <clears throat> an electric vehicle, uh, fueling costs are much lower than a traditional uh, internal combustion vehicle. So people frequently ask, well, what's it going to do to my power bill? And as you can see, it costs about 40 to $45 to drive a thousand miles, which is an average month's worth of driving. And gas costs are triple that. And you can see the calculations that I used. And I've got some links um, in the slides that um, help explain the how I got to those calculations as well. Next slide. Um, another question is how far can you go in an EV? And um, it's kind of interesting. So I wanted to show this graph because it really visually points out how far we've come. So when modern all electric vehicles were introduced in model year 2011, there were four models available and the ranges span between 63 and 94 miles with a median range of 68 miles. But over time, the number of models and ranges of EVs has increased. So last year in 2022, the average range climbed to 200 and 91 miles. Next slide. There's also a, a myth, a persistent myth that EVs are just as dirty as driving gas cars. Um, so I wanted to um, highlight that misconception and dispel it. So um, 
when as you see as you can see in the graph in in Georgia the average electric vehicle produces under 20 percent of the emissions of a gasoline vehicle and the main reason for that is because EVs are so much more energy efficient um the around 20 percent of the gasoline that's pumped into the car and the fuel tank actually makes the wheels go round and round but the inverse of that is true for electric vehicles about 80 percent of the electrons actually make the car go so you're using a whole lot less energy to get from point a to point b so you're creating a whole lot less or fewer emissions to make that happen next slide please I also wanted to highlight there are tons of electric options that are available for every popular type of vehicle, including F-150 pickup truck, there are minivans, there are SUVs, there are 66 currently offered models and 60 more coming by 2025. So let's, next slide, let's talk about how we charge an electric vehicle. So one way, oh, I'm sorry, I skipped a slide. So, yep. Uh, how to, and I, I added this slide in so um, you can find how to browse um, EV models. This is a great website from Plug in America called Plugstar that I wanted to share. All right, so next slide. Now let's talk about how we charge an electric vehicle. Um, so one way is called trickle charging or level one, and it adds about five miles per hour. So if you charge overnight, you can typically replenish what you've used in a day's worth of driving. The second um, type of charging is called level two charging, and that allows about 25 to 60 miles per hour, depending on the, the amps going to the device. Um, these are the types of charging stations that you find around town, and some folks choose to install a charging um, station in their at their home as well. And then the last type is called DC fast charging. And these are the types of chargers that you find along highways. And it allows you to recharge approximately 80% of the battery in a half an hour. And um, also just wanted to point out for the DC fast charging on the bottom, there's two different shapes. Nissan used the shape on the left, but they're phasing it out in their new models. So pretty soon all of the um, DC fast charging shape will be the one on the right, and that'll be consistent. Next slide. So I also just wanted to show kind of a picture of what level one charging looks like. So that's, it's basically a, a glorified uh, electric cord. <laughs> you plug one end into a, a regular 110 outlet in your garage or your home, and then the other um, adapter goes into and plugs into the car. The next slide. So these are the level two chargers that you typically find when you're out and about around town. And these are the ones that add 25 to 60 miles per hour. Next slide. And then this is a DC fast charging station. These are the ones that you find typically around highways and they recharge the battery capacity up to about 80% in a half an hour. And those charge times are getting faster uh, as the technology is improving as well. And then the last slide show the next slide about charging. This is a Tesla supercharger. And I just wanted to point out that for level one, two and supercharging is what they call the DC fast charging. The shape is the same. Um, and it is not the same shape as the other models. But there are adapters that you can get so that you can plug a Tesla, char a Tesla car into community charging as well. All right, next slide. So how do we find EV charging. There are lots of helpful apps that you can have on your phone. Um, one that I like to use is called PlugShare. So it allows you to filter the type of car that you have and the type of charging that you're looking for. It works pretty much like Google Maps and it's also crowdsourced. So um, if the charging station is not functioning as well as it should be, other uh, EV drivers can um, look, make that um, notation in the, in the app. Also with Tesla, the navigation is built into the car's uh, navigation system. So you type in where you want to go and then it finds the charging for you automatically. Um, I also wanted to point out that with the bipartisan infrastructure law, um, the NEVI program is investing $7.5 billion in federal funding in the next five years. So there is going to be an inordinate amount more uh, charging infrastructure within the next five years around town and around the country. All right, so um, next slide, Just talking about some of the tax credits. So there are federal tax credits for new vehicles. There are now federal tax credits for used electric vehicles. There are charging, uh, I'm sorry, there are tax credits for charging stations if you want to install one at your home or business. And utilities also have some rebates that are available. So I have links to all of those. Next slide. And then I also included some resources that are really helpful. Um, 
there is coming up National Drive Electric Earth Day that I know um, the, the Drawdown Georgia is participating in. So it's a link to find events that are happening around uh, near you. Next slide. <clears throat> And then I also wanted to point out, and people don't realize, there is an electric application for every class of truck and medium and heavy duty um, trucks. There are transit and school buses, delivery and garbage trucks that are here today. Every child deserves to ride to school in an emission-free bus. And right now there are quiet garbage trucks and emission-free deliveries happening in towns, but we need to be advocating for more. So I wanted to make sure we're all aware of that. And then the last slide, I just wanted to invite you all to stay connected with um, the Southern Alliance for Clean Energy via our social media channels. We have Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, and also invite you to join our Electrify the South mailing list to stay current on EV events and to receive any updates via our monthly newsletter. So thanks for your time, I appreciate it. Thank you, Dory, that's incredibly helpful. Um, I know you highlighted some of the new um, tax credits and other subsidies that are coming down from the federal government. As people kind of digest what those are, can you talk about some of the um, decision points people may be making as they think about whether they should lease or own an EV in order to take advantage of some of those programs? Yes. So there are federal tax credits for the purchase of electric vehicles. The Treasury just amended the list of qualified vehicles today. So there are 22 electric vehicles that currently qualify, both plug-in hybrid and fully electric, that, um, that qualify for those tax credits. But the leasing allows you to use another tax credit, um, the commercial vehicle tax credit, um, that opens it up to more models that are available. So if the particular model you're not that you're looking at, if you can't use it to purchase and get the tax credit, a great option would be looking at leasing that vehicle because then it would qualify for the tax credits that the dealer may be able to pass on. Fantastic. Thank you so much.